Three true originals on the show tonight. One is the multi-talented Stephen Fry. Then there's a man who's written and sung some of the everlasting music of his generation. He is James Taylor. My first guest has been described as the funniest person on the planet. And when Billy Connolly tells you that, you'd better believe it. In his own estimation, he suffers from what he describes as a form of legitimate insanity. Welcome, please, Robin Williams! <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> Thank you. Somewhere there's someone going, use the colors that would blind anyone. <laughs> I got these out of Liza's wedding. <laughs> Just after Michael said, I can't use them. <laughs> it's great that Michael Jackson was oh. the best man at, at, his, at her wedding. That's kind of pushing the envelope on that term, really. <laughs> is full of paradox. Uh, oh, just a touch, just dear. Just a touch. <laughs> and, you know, he claimed afterwards he went out and started protesting racism, and I went, honey, you got to pick a race first. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, geisha, elf? I don't know. <laughs> About to jump species, it's hard. It is nice to have you among us. It really it's is. It's good to be among you once again, it's people of Earth. <laughs> Thank you. And, did, and did a you... lovely tie. You like the tie, I've never you? seen NASDAQ as a tie. That's... <laughs> Over here, we see all of our stocks are slowly but surely coming in. <laughs> and down here, they're still selling. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's very it nice. Is, I'm glad you like it. You, you shall have it after the show as, oh, as a gift. Thank you, sir. You shall have it. You shall have it. And you shall have it, as it was before this time of Edwina. <laughs> oh, you're up with oh, Edwina. Oh, poor Mr. Major. Uh, <laughs> Just when you thought he was boring, right? <laughs> And he comes out and, oh, there she is. Hello, I was with John. <laughs> and there's Clinton going, don't ask me. <laughs> oh, baby, I ain't with nobody. <laughs> uh -uh. Uh, you didn't. And there's Bill. You know, Bill went for well, the little fat chick. And he was. <laughs> <laughs> and if she was really Jewish, she would have gotten that stain out. You know that. <laughs> it would have been gone. Uh, Look what I did. Hello? <laughs> You didn't arrive uh, with Mr. Clinton, did you? No, Mr. Clinton came on his own, I think. He did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robin, <well, really. laughs> As in the sense of getting here. Yeah, yes, of course. Oh, yeah. baby, who's your daddy? Who loves you? Yeah. <laughs> About the, the problem of travelling nowadays, the airport security. Do you have it's any a bit difficult with that? now. You know, in yeah. the old days, it used to be, oh, get on the plane, come on, get on the plane. Oh, what's that? Hold on. Oh, that's a gun. Okay, get on the plane. <laughs> now it's hardcore. You know, it's yeah. basically they they take away everything from you. you know, first of all, you, if you if you're having meat on the plane, you don't have a knife because that could be a weapon. So it's like it's like the quest for fire flight. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> And they take away things like nail clippers because that could be turned into a weapon. What do they think? You're going to be going, open the cockpit door! <laughs> or the bitch loses a hangnail. <laughs> Come on! It's, you know, they had... You all right, coach? <laughs> it's all right. Oh, dear God! Um, and I grew up, you know, I live in San Francisco, so when you go through the metal detector there, there are some pierced people there. You know? <laughs> Take out your keys. Oh, tip of the iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's sort of a bizarre thing. Uh, when you see a, a girl with a pierced tongue, I asked this girl, I said, why did you pierce your tongue? And she said, it increases the sexual stimulation. <laughs> yeah. no, it's, 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 it's all right, my darling. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Something simple. <laughs> But the security is tight now. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a bizarre right. thing. And we now have, you know, the Office of Homeland Security, which is, uh, you know... What's that? Well, it's basically in America, it's, it's to uh, watch over and warn us when things bad are going to happen. Because every so often, Rumsfeld comes out and goes, I don't know where. I don't know when. But something awful is going to happen. That's all for today. No further questions. It's like, what is it, the Central Intuitive Agency? <laughs> I'm getting a feeling of a man wearing a shoe that hisses. 
And well, all they've learned so far is what the FBI can share with us is beware of people who take flight school and are interested in takeoff and landing. Number one. <laughs> number two, anyone who gets on a, a on a shoe gets on a plane with a shoe that goes. Pfft. Warning, warning, you over there. And now people are wide awake on that. Used to be on the you know the the red eye flight, they would get on the plane, take whatever ma medication they couldn't wake up in Russia, going this isn't Cleveland. <laughs> And now they basically, everyone's wide awake looking for anyone ordering hummus. <laughs> you know, and they have, they have, you know, this thing of, they say there's no racial profiling, but no. they, a little woman will come on, a sweet little southern stewardess, and go, ladies and gentlemen, before we get on flat five, I just want to read off a list of names. These are just, these are random bag checks. These are, these are totally random. <laughs> And I'm just going to read off a list of names. Hassan bin Seen. <laughs> Hassan bin Leh. <laughs> Judy Smith. 14 Arabs and a blonde, and every black man and every Hispanic man in the room is going, Thank you, God. <laughs> We're off the list now, sweet Lord Almighty. Go away now. And it's always a difficult thing because pilots are always, uh, you know, the pilots used to come on with that whole Chuck Yeager rap where they go, hey, everybody, I've just had a few cocktails. <laughs> Let's take this sucker down to the end of the runway and see what it'll do. <laughs> now they come on, they're very loving, and they go, hey, I love all of you. The stewardess comes out and goes, in case of a cabin seizure, a small Louisville slugger will fall from the ceiling. <laughs> Grab with both hands, aim for the, he the assailant's head, knees and groin, and keep hitting. <laughs> Basically, it's home defense, just like you had during World War II. Well, you mean Dad's Army? Yes, Dad's, Dad's Army. Dad's Army. Old men with a colostomy bag and a pitchfork. <laughs> I captured Rudolph Hess personally. I threw my colostomy bag and covered him in shite. Go! <laughs> Get out of that fucker, and I'm talking about the plane. <laughs> Go! Step away. Oh, God. Is it true? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is it true that Winston Churchill was sometimes so drunk that they had a guy from the BBC do some of his favorite that's speeches. That's apparently the, the, really? been reported. Really? It that's one of them. The guy who did Winnie the Pooh. That's a... <laughs> so he was going, we will fight him on the beaches, in the air, on the land. Eeyore and Tigger. <laughs> <laughs> but God bless her. You have, bless, well, you have Tony of, Blair now, sir. Yeah, we do. We God bless. Indeed. Oh, and you are President come... Bush. Uh, yes. We all oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's drink a full one. <laughs> oh, there we a mighty man. A mighty man. A mighty man, sir. Just don't ask him to spell. No. <laughs> I love watching Bush watch Tony speak, because he's going, I can't spell most of those words. <laughs> you just see him going, you know, some men are born great, some achieve greatness, some get it as a graduation gift. It's like, <laughs> he's George II, the boy king. No one realizes <laughs> Let's now come to the purpose of your no, visit. I the mean, purpose of our I, visit, sir. I, it was, uh, up until now, I think it was Billy Connolly who held the record for talking longest without a question prompting it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, well, I mean, I... And, and, and Just knowing, a stimulus, sir. And knowing that the two of you are great friends, I wonder who stops talking first. Oh, it's difficult to know, you know. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Once you get up there and there are people playing dead cats, you can't stop. <laughs> For me, I get up there with him and it's wild because he's just, he just goes, he'll tell you stories about, do you do yeah, right? <laughs> and once I get off the plane in Scotland, I need subtitles. It's very hard. Rub it, dear, 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 What? Oh, dear, 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 That's how they can invent golf. <laughs> oh, they can have a couple of Guinness and then the next thing you know, what's, here's my idea for a sport. <laughs> I knock a ball into a gopher hole. You mean like pool? No, forget pool. That was a straight stick. A little broken stick. I whack a ball into a gopher hole. Oh, you mean like croquet? Ah, oh, no, not croquet. That's a pussy sport. I put the hole hundreds of yards away. Oh, kind of like a bowling alley. Oh, no way. I put shit in the way. I put stuff in the way like trees and bushes. So you whack the ball, and you're sitting there whacking away, and you feel like you're gonna have a stroke. <laughs> That's what we'll call it, because every time you hit the ball, you think you're gonna die. <laughs> and right near the end, they'll put a nice flat bit with a tiny flag to give you hope. <laughs> and they'll put a pool and a sandbox to grab your ball. <laughs> 
Do you do this one time? Oh, no, 18 damn times! <laughs> but... The question is... The, the question. The question. Ah, the first question. And that holds the record for the first question in the middle of the interview. The producer's like... <laughs> No, no, the, the, the question is... Edwina this, on line one. This, uh, <laughs> what is he doing there? <laughs> you don't figure in the diaries, do you? The Edwina Curry diaries. Oh, the Edwina Curry. Yes. I hope not. Uh, my transatlantic adventure, perhaps? Or oh, an uh, adventure weekend uh, with Edwina Curry. It's <laughs> more like Wild Kingdom, really. <laughs> I took off the beeper collar just long enough to find John again. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Charles is going, it's all right. <laughs> we'll find her by Tuesday. <laughs> and there's Bill going, call me. Come on, don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> now, but the question is... Yes, yes. <laughs> we'll see if you can get to it by the end. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. The question now, is... Now, now, this, we see this wonderful manic stand-up performer there. Don't we, this sort of extraordinary flow of, of, of laughter... And then in the, pl in the film that you're playing now, One Hour Photo, you're mm -hmm. this very silent man. You're totally, utterly bland. Yes. And faceless almost. Yeah, that was the purpose, to actually do the exact opposite of what you've just seen. <laughs> <laughs> and you managed it incredibly well. Yeah, I think what? because I could do what I've just done and what I do on stage and have all of that energy and then let all of that go and be this man, like you said, who is almost faceless, who is so bland that he lives vicariously through other people's photographs. And it's that's why I did it, to be in a movie that's kind of so unsettling. Because of that stillness, I think, and it takes people by surprise, which is good. It's a very sinister film. Yes, uh, it but is. It, but it, 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 in the end, it, well, we, won't, we can't talk about the, the ending of it, but it's, it's, a, it's on many levels. It's not quite what you expect. And that's yeah, it always takes it. strange turns where you think, oh, no, he's that, and you go, oh, no, it's something else. And even the very end, which people think, oh, don't, and then it takes another turn. Which exactly, is, the end is brilliant. Yeah, it yeah. keeps you always going, it takes you one way and always takes another turn, which is good. That's why I loved it when I read it. And when I saw the, uh, the videos, Mark Romanek was a video director, and I, in videos he had done so many different things visually. I went, I've got to do this movie because it combines both the visuals and this great script. I went, this is, you know, really interesting work. Well, in it, then, you play Sai, who was the guy at the one-hour photo camera. Yeah, the man who basically sees the pictures of, you know, you and the thong. Not you. Not me. <laughs> That's a lovely picture, though. It is. Isn't it? I like the one goodness. in the chaps better. But, you know, <laughs> it is that he basically develops people's pictures, and he's been kind of fascinated with this one family. A very, like the in-style poster family. Beautiful family, beautiful husband and wife and a child and a beautiful house. Everything that's the total opposite of what his life is. But what he remembered too, isn't it? Is yeah, that, well, the thing that there's a great line in the movie where he says, with family pictures, it's that someone cared enough about me to take my picture. I exist and it's, it's a moment in time, a happy moment. You know, very yes. few times you take pictures of Uncle Pete going... <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> it's that moment where you really do, especially when you look at old photographs, most of the time, like when we were at the flea market and the movie would take all these old pictures, and yes. these are people who are gone, but there's a moment of them smiling and a moment of, uh, just a brief captured moment of They're happiness. They're incredibly nostalgic, aren't they? And yeah, very bizarre. When you do ones. a character like, like that, and what, you made, you made, what, 40 movies now, haven't you? Oh, but I don't remember now. It it's is about 40. Yeah. That but, and Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, that's Good that's <laughs> the, the, the adult versions of every movie you do. Yeah, like, but, 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 but what's, the, what's the key to it, to the part? In, in the sense that, I mean, you know, some actors say it's the walk, some say it's the... I think it was the look. I think when you look. said that kind of blandness, to bland everything out. Started with the hair, taking all colour out of the hair, making the face so bland and so neutral that literally one day I was walking through the store, he works in like a big save mart, and I disappeared and then Mark went, that's what I want. I want him to yes. blend in so that outside of that store he's lost. He's like a, you know, he's a fish or a chameleon going, what, what colour do I become now? And that's why he would fantasise about someone else's life. You also did it for me, the, the, the shoes. Everyone, a woman actually complimented that, me on my acting and said, thank you, but that was the sound man. Because <laughs> the shoes squeak, have that squeak. kind of... That, that's yeah. what, even like some, um, as if you're training on, some sort of small furry yeah, animal. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was the walk combined with the, uh, some small furry animal. <laughs> what are you doing, dear? <laughs> 
Don't be afraid. Wear live fur. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wear fur. <laughs> it's always strange, but yeah, that that was part of it. The walk, the look, it all helps. I think it's kind of inside, and then the loneliness of a guy who's so isolated that he would yeah. think that pictures are the way to achieve another life. Yeah. Have you ever been that been lonely in your childhood? Were you lonely? Um, maybe. <laughs> I was an only child, so yeah, so. for a long time it was just me and the puppet. But it was, <laughs> you know, it was a bit of a, you know, an unusual time. People go, is that why you're so hairy, Romy? <laughs> it was, a, you know, an isolated child. <laughs> it's a time delay thing where people go, oh, oh. <laughs> but it was, you know, that I could go back and use some of that as a sense memory of that. Talking about being, being uh, hairy, you once said you were too furry to be a leading man. I was actually hit on by Coco the gorilla. Were you? <laughs> You know, she can sign, and it was amazing because uh, they took me to meet her because it was part of this program to raise money for a new habitat. So she signs to her trainer, who's the blue-eyed simian, and I went, thank you. And then she signs to her trainer to do this, and I go, what is that? She wants you to lift your shirt. I lift my shirt, and she pinches both my nipples. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm going, whoa, <laughs> Missy wants to play. <laughs> and then she grabs me by the hand and starts to take me in the back room, and the trainer's going, Coco, no. <laughs> And the trainer's going, I can't help you. And all of a sudden, I think that it's like the crocodile hunter's going to walk out and go, Oh, danger, danger, danger. <laughs> she wants to bump uglies with him. <laughs> Watch out, boys and girls. She's going to do the bone dance. Be careful. <laughs> going to be some interesting little babies this fall. <laughs> but it was interesting. She hit on me. <laughs> she, went, she was like grooming me like, oh. Mm. <laughs> it's hard when you, when you have this much hair. I've seen mosquitoes take their own life. <laughs> <laughs> you just see them go, yeah. Hard day. What, what, where did this, this humour come from? This is, uh, somebody must have this uh, your performance as being Touretic. Yeah, uh, uh, voluntary Tourette's. Voluntary which is Tourette's. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> it is a bit like that. I mean, it, there is that thing where I'll cross over the line sometimes. Obviously, today I did, but then <laughs> well, you had that look like, oh, do stop. <laughs> that look like, oh, uh, will we be getting to the question soon? <laughs> but it is that thing of where you go off on things and you, sometimes you get, you'll, you'll see a moment you go, oh, and you just pursue it. And, it. and it's like a little bit like possession. And it's, uh, it happens once in a while. But where's it, the moment just comes, there's nothing pre-planned or anything. It, you, no, I mean, a, like today, there's, there's a couple of, yeah, sequential. Or oh, it's actually more like a fractal, but then we're getting, even Stephen Hawkins going, don't go there now. <laughs> I called his house one day. Hello, this is Stephen Hawking. Yes, I'd like to leave a message. No, this is Stephen Hawking. <laughs> <laughs> it is that idea that it's just kind of if A, then two. You know, you kind of, you know, you jumpstart and go to different places, usually from some weird synapse firing. I, I watched your, your um, last Broadway show, which oh, was yeah. in July, uh, yeah. um, live on Broadway, which has been recorded for HBO. I mean, that was a truly astonishing performance. Because, for, I mean, for two hours, I mean, you stand there, I don't, you seem to have no, there's no script, there's no prompt, there's nothing. No, you and can't, it, really. But you, don't, but you don't tell long anecdotes, either. I mean, it's all quick fire yeah, you become a thousand different people. Because that was how I started off. I started off in a club where, it was, it usually you start off performing in bars, where you can't really take the time, because people go, hey, and it's, you know, what are you doing now? And those, those are usually people who own the club. <laughs> So I started to develop a style that was just very much like, you know, synaptic, quick firing, moving, so they never really had a chance to lock, you know, lock on as a target. And then it started to develop as being this kind of idea of taking an idea and going with it and then breaking away. And that's been kind of the style. So it, it is extemporized to that extent that you... Yeah, it starts off, usually the first five minutes are like kind of getting, especially when different cities, I would start off talking about the city and then go off from there. But you, you said in the, in the research that your, your influences were, one or two, were, were English comics. Oh, yeah, Peter Sellers, amazingly really? so. Really? Yeah, I mean, in terms of comic acting, I think for me the best movie was... Oh, it doesn't get any better than Doctor Strangelove, because here's... You know, you know, all these distinct characters. I mean, b besides Doctor Strangelove, which is the uh, the ultimate Henry Kissinger. But, <laughs> <laughs> I never understood that movie till now. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Mr. Kissinger. I've seen all of your bombs. Could you sign them? <laughs> it's the idea of him and all of those characters for me was the best. And you know, I, I one of the few people in America who had copies of the Goon Show. Really? So, oh, I'm <laughs> Natty, how did you get across that lake? I walked across those stones. Those aren't stones, those are alligators. I wonder why my legs were getting shorter. <laughs> <laughs> That's an explosion that can only be heard by an idiot. 
What was that noise? Oh. <laughs> you know, those are the things I kind of grew up with, and Jonathan Winters, but, you know, yes. those are the, my influences. Yeah. And Peter Cook and Dudley Moore. Are you influenced by them, were you, as well? Oh, yeah, and, uh, you know, Derek and Clive, but we can't talk about that. No, we can't talk about that. Not without rubber wrapping. You know? <laughs> but, you know, those were great comics. You also played the clubs there, too, didn't you? you played... Oh, yeah, I played, I played in London, which was great, the, uh, the comic strip, the comedy store. I don't know if there is a comic strip. No, Robin, wrong. <laughs> but, uh, and then I played a club in Windsor. Lenny Henry said, come out and play Windsor, which was a great idea, Till I walked on stage and, you know... Worst night of my comedy life. It was, this is all you heard in the audience. It was, ladies and Robin Williams. And all you heard was. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you, not even like, get off. It was just like this. Like. <laughs> and that's like that old thing where you see the comic where he's on stage and I'm sweating more like Marlon Brando after Thai food. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my lower track is going, should we release now, Robin? <laughs> if you fart, you might get a laugh and get off stage. <laughs> It was the most frightening night, but, you know, it was good to have in the back of your memory. It was Absolutely. a great thing. What, what about the balance of your life now? I mean, I do, do you feel you may, mainly do movies, of course, and you work, you've got three out this year. Yeah, um, the... I think I'll continue to do films, hopefully. And... But do, I, do you feel you have to every so often get out and explode all this energy on stage? Yeah, I think... It's go, a must, go, is it? Yeah, I think now, I, I did the last stand-up before. This one was about 16 years ago, but I've realised that it's important to do... For me, as you know, it's cheaper than therapy, number one. <laughs> and number two, there's so much to talk about, you know? You have a lot of things going on in the world. Just the Pope alone, when he's called... <laughs> it always looks like he just wants to fart and they keep pushing him around. And the guy behind him is going, I got your six, no worry. All I do is tell him, the Vatican Museum. Welcome to the history of the Vatican. <laughs> when he's going around, have you ever see him in the Pope Mobile? I just want to put bingo balls in there. <laughs> Clothes that even Liberace would go, oh, please. <laughs> what is this? Ermine. <laughs> you know, nice purse. Hello, but it's on fire. <laughs> I think there might be any Catholic viewers still watching. No? Yeah, no Catholic. I'll, <laughs> I'll never go to Ireland. <laughs> don't get off the plane. <laughs> yeah, don't get off in Rome. Two, two nuns that follow you going, I see him. <laughs> You said that, that laughter is better than therapy for you. Is it, is it also, has it been an aphrodisiac? Oh, very much. Very much. In the old days. Right. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Nothing as close to an orgasm as laughter, sir. Really? <laughs> Same face. That's not funny. <laughs> Oh, come on now. But I think, yeah, it helped a little. Is, is, is it the best medicine? Oh, I think so. It's an enema for the soul, really. <laughs> I think it helps. I think it can really be a good thing to keep... keep it, it kind of releases. It, it releases a great energy in people. You can, get, you can talk about things that are quite sometimes painful and get across with comedy as something that you couldn't talk just straight at because people would go, oh, please, don't talk about that. Especially now with what's going on, you know, it's, mm. you know, we're considering every day it's like George is going, we've got to go after Sodom, 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 Sodom. <laughs> he tried to kill my father. Well, why don't you get a posse, Lumpy? Let's go. <laughs> Come on. Here we go. You know how, if you want to do an impression of his father, all you have to do is take, well, what you do is you take John Wayne and tighten his ass. <laughs> There you have George W. The first. There he is. Not gonna say it. Can't use. No syntax. What are you, Yoda? Come on. <laughs> yeah, friend, good. Yeah. None have economy. Bad. Good. Yeah. You know. I think it's um, that's why I do comedy. Just for the last few seconds, because it's like, all right. Yeah, that was nice. You make a serious point. Serious point. You can laugh. talk. Well, you can dabble in them. You know? Dabble. Robin Williams, thank you very much indeed. Mr. Parkinson, thank you, Robin sir. Robin Williams. Thank you, sir. Oh, well, I enjoyed that. Thank you, sir. Salute. Stephen coming out now. Oh, great. I know him for so long. That's easy. I forgot it. I forgot it. Crazy coop.
to all we're building now. Now, it's easy to say what my next guest hasn't done and to list his achievements. He hasn't climbed Everest or Captain England at cricket, had a record in the top ten, or a dalliance with Edwina Curry. <laughs> so far as we know. Nor was he the fifth Beatle. But for the rest, he's been there and he's done that. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Fry. <laughs> Bless you. Mm. You're not in the Curry Diaries, are you, by any chance? No, that was a major cock up, wasn't it? <laughs> 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 Red party number two! Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No, all no, right. Well, shall we move on? From yes, I think yes, we should. Yes, I know, yes. I'm, I'm embarrassing you. Although I do read here in the uh, back leaf of your book here, where you're talking about the sexual habits of the spectacled bear, which, of course, you were written about, yeah. but you say, of Stephen Fry's sexual habits, you say, subject to much speculation amongst scholars and gossip mongers, the mating ritual, which is remarkably noisy, lasts 14 and a half years and makes a great deal of mess. Yes. So possibly Edwina got away with it, did she? She did, yes. yes. <laughs> she doesn't know how lucky she was. No. <laughs> um, well, I feel if you're going to write about bears and their intimate personal habits, it's only fair that one should write about one's own as well, because it is <laughs> an extraordinary thing about animals, that we belong to the same kingdom as animals, is the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom, and we are, are we not animals? Many ways. Some furrier yes. than others, as yes. you made that very point. <laughs> and, um, send, out, send it out, send the love out now. <laughs> and there's a lot of fuss made about how similar we are to animals. Mm -hmm. We have our drives and urges. Yeah, and I now need to, well, we, the only thing we don't do is smell each other's asses to say, hi, how are you? <laughs> I do, but that's it. Yeah, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. That's it. Here we go. Yeah. We're off for a minute, though. Have you been? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still vegetarian, yeah, I see. Absolutely spot on. <laughs> but it is. It is. Oh, I still might have. Yeah. Do, you know, do you know this man? This man in the 80s, when, when, it, was, when it was fashionable, before anyone knew that it was dangerous. Used to take large quantities of cocaine. I'm just trying to imagine <laughs> what, I was what like. speed you were running at. <laughs> you must have been. There was an episode of Star Trek where everybody lived faster, and there were just little noises. Yeah, in people's ears. you must have been like that. Yeah, it was, it was a frightening thing. And impotent too, which was a double bill. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Really? You know, fast and dead. <laughs> <laughs> Assault with a dead weapon. Yeah. Was that your, was that your cook? Cocaine is God's way of turning you around. Making too much, too much money. money. Yeah. That was your <laughs> and it was my accountant's wet dream. <laughs> Mr. Williams, I can't write off $50,000 for snacks. <laughs> Colombian <laughs> College Fund, yeah. <laughs> Didn't you call it once the devil's dandruff? Oh, well, yeah. The dancing powder, the wonderful joy, the Peruvian marching dust. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> How are you doing? I'm not bad, I'm not bad, I'm not bad, I'm not bad. <laughs> I'm doing okay, get off me! <laughs> OK, Mr. Bush, we have to go speak to the people now. Fine. <laughs> Fine, I'm OK. Now, Dad, can I call my dad? No, Mr. Bush, we can't call your father. Oh, come on. Can we bomb yet? No, that's why Cheney has the codes. That's why... <laughs> that's why Dick has the codes. <laughs> he's good. He's, he's very good, he's isn't very, he? He's very, very good. Very good. This, this, this talk of, um, of Peruvian dancing powder brings us very neatly to my book, which is set <laughs> in Peru. Diary. And if you could close in and yeah. see the lovely teats on this bear. Look at that. Well. She's right now in Play Bear. <laughs> but Who sure. wants to hibernate? Who's your alpha? Yeah. But so certainly a fulsome pair of fun bags, as you yes, say. This is... This is... <laughs> this... <laughs> You're not going to get a collar on that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is a story of your search for these spectacled bears yes. in Peru and, and beyond. <coughs> and a successful search it was too because they're becoming extinct. Yeah? They are. They are. I, I'm, I've never really been, a, been a, the kind of person who's been uh, associated either in my own mind or anybody else's with the ecological quests and uh, television uh, documentaries following animals. And uh, apart from anything else, I'm someone who more or less relies on, on room service and broadband internet access in hotel rooms and so on, and you don't get this too often in, in Lima and points north in the Andes. But I have to say, um, the, the producers of this programme, I wanted to do a programme about Paddington Bear, 
um, who, if you remember, um, came from, from Peru. darkest Peru. That's right. And, uh, and I got hooked on these extraordinary, endearing creatures, um, these bears. Most Peruvians don't know that there are bears in Peru. They're, they're so shy. And uh, it is, it, one of the things, a point I was um, struggling to make earlier about animals, is, <laughs> is that we are so interested in them, you know, we, we chase them we, in order to look at them and photograph them. But uh, no animal, unless it's hungry, is interested in us. And it occurred to me, we were always trying to define what it is that human beings have that animals don't, you know, consciousness, wit, self-awareness, or whatever one tries to call it. But it is actually interest in other animals. I mean, essentially, a bear doesn't give a cuss as to whether or not kangaroos exist. Um, and kangaroos don't care whether there's such a thing as a cockroach. But we care about all of them. And it's a most remarkable thing. And I think what it is, of course, is, is that, in a sense, Genesis is right. We are so guilty. As I once went to look at gorillas, and it's the same with bears, and you realise what's magical about them is that when they wake up in the morning, a bear does not say, oh, God, I was a, I was a very bad bear yesterday. <laughs> I, 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 I'm guilty. They don't feel guilty that they possess organs of sexual generation, for a start. They don't, they don't feel they should wear clothes. They never ask another bear, you're seeing another animal. No, exactly. <laughs> they don't. No. They have not. They just spend 100% of every minute of every hour of every day being a bear. And a tree frog spends all its time being a tree frog. We spend all our time trying to be somebody else. You know, trying to be like the person next door, the person on television, the person in the movies, the person on pop stars, the rivals or whatever. We're trying to be somebody else. Yes. And animals supremely are themselves. And no one is more themselves than a bear. I think that's why Winnie the Pooh and, and, and Paddington and so on are, are so, so endearing, especially with the British spirit, because they're rather stout and dignified and slightly raffish and a little bit rumpled and slightly annoyed at things. Is that how you see yourself? Uh, more or less, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I'm not very hairy at <laughs> all, no. In fact, but, you know, a bear is, in fact, it's a, it's a sort of gay thing, you know. What is? Well, I, <laughs> I looked up. <laughs> we'll I looked be right up. back. It's, yes, sorry. But, you know, I'm not uh, in, 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 entirely, entirely unaware of many of the nuances of the, of the gay... Community. Um, um, <laughs> bears and cubs. Uh, yeah, well, that's it. Yes. And, and so I see. I and I want. When I first did this document, I wanted to look up. Um, uh, I wanted to look up bears. <laughs> I don't mean that, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that's just silly. Like, what are you doing? Think, yeah, it's silly. Oh, no, no. Yeah. that's just silly. This week, I, bear yeah. gynecology. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I on the on the internet um, and uh, and so I, everything said the bear cave. Everything you want to know about bears. And it was uh, a lot of very hairy men with pink objects sticking out of their nether areas. You found that online? Yes, I found it online. What I couldn't find was anything about bears. <laughs> about real bears. <laughs> Earth sign bears, the <laughs> Tremarctos ornatus, which is the, the spectacle bear. What so cool, because it has little markings around its eyes. What did they... You, you said that they're unaware of, of uh, in Peru, of, mm. of the existence of these bears. Yeah. Uh, and watching the film that you made, it seemed to me they were indifferent to their fate as well. I mean, what did they make of you, this little mad Englishman coming there to fight a crusade on behalf of an animal that they thought was... Well, just a wretched animal, basically. Yes, yeah. well, I mean, this is the that thing conflict, that... isn't there? Sensibility. Their understanding of human beings is, is a pretty dim one because the only way you can find a bear, we had a natural history crew which for, for months was tracking the droppings, as these people like to do. They like to go chasing the, 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 the droppings and where, seeing where they've eaten, and they couldn't find one. The only ones we could find are ones that had been captured and put in zoos and yeah. uh, awful little private that, zoos. The most that squalid. awful restaurant where you found the, two of the bears. Yeah. And that wonderful condor, too. That, that's, in, in many yeah. ways, in the film, the most tragic side. This is majestic bird. Oh, in a restaurant? You, they had him strapped. They had him in, in a, a cage, in a cage no, outside the no restaurant. bigger than our chair, actually. Oh. This thing is... It's Can't just... talk to a bird. I want to show you the bird. And it's in the back and just yeah. like... Yeah. Do you know there's the line of William Blake's or Robin Redbreast in a cage puts all heaven in a rage? Yes. Um, and I think it's a, it's a beautiful line. It's a wonderful sort of naivety and perfection that Blake managed. But a condor is this kind of a symbol, both of the whole South American continent yes. and, and of, you know, it, all the cliches, soaring, majestic. And it's one of the, the great creations when yes. you look at it. It's a wingspan it's like brilliant, it's isn't it? Yeah. It's and there it is. Oh, 12 foot wingspan. Yeah. Yeah. And this yeah, awful thing, this sad yeah. bird set there tethered. And it never flown. It couldn't have flown. It couldn't fly at all in there, could it? No. no. What's, why have a bird like that? Mm. I don't know. Maybe. And but, Peru, yeah. I'm just to rave about Peru for a second, because it's an astonishing country. It has, um, it has more terrains in it than any other country on Earth. You go, at the same time it takes you to fly from London to Edinburgh, you go over a Pacific coastline, which is like, you know, California or something, it's a Pacific coastline, over highlands and glens that are or, uh, over what looks like alpine scenery, and then over the second highest mountain range in the world, and then down over these extraordinary high plateaus 
into Amazonia, into, into this jungle. place where, you know, Peru has 55% of all species of birds in it. I mean, it's have the largest really guinea pig, what is that? Uh, oh, the huge, yes, the little <laughs> queen. So, yeah, but there's one that's like, it's, yeah. it's used as a food source, but it's like, it's giant. Yeah. Literally look at other guinea pigs like, what are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, like, on, it's pink, like the steroid guinea pig. But pink dolphins. <laughs> yeah. The the pink, pink river dolphins. Who, who the local people rather conveniently believe dress up in evening dress in the evenings uh, and a top hat and ravish the women. So that when there is an, <laughs> the famous um, drag yeah, dolphin, when there is an unlooked slowly for we go upstream and look for the pearl necklace. There they are, <laughs> <laughs> the drag dolphin savaging the women slowly but surely. Exactly. We're only exactly. finding the evening gown. You're, you're right, the Edith Head dolphin. You're right. <laughs> You're mad, but you're right. Yeah. And it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> I'm certainly no, no, no. Um, it's, <laughs> sorry, I, I was, <laughs> it, no, if there's an unlooked for pregnancy in the middle of the, of, of Amazon, they, they, they say, they say it was the dolphin, he came in the evening. How's the baby? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pink, it's, it's pink and it stands up right. But yeah. you rescued a bat. I had to say you are worth every penny of that 80 million that EMI are going to pay you. I think oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Every penny. That's all right. Yeah. Watch out, Mariah Carey. But you had, I mean, the, the, the story ending is a good one because you, you found, you've made it to... Are they, are they yes. procreated? Well, um, we, what, we, what we have is this um, webcam. <coughs> we found this little bear um, in a cage. But no bigger than this, this really. It's been all its, all its life in there. Uh, it was called by the villagers, who are hundreds of miles from civilization. It was called Yogi, which shows how far the cancer of your noxious culture has <laughs> spread. <laughs> Even in the most far from Boo boo, don't be mad. Could have been boo boo. Boo boo, come on, let us see. Boo boo, come on. Yeah, Scooby. Come on, Scooby, hello, come here. That dog was called Scooby. I mean, it's all shocking. But anyway, um, <laughs> this, this Yogi. Um, we, we took to this marvellous reservation in Aguas Calientes at the foothills of the, uh, the, 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 the wonderful Machu Picchu um, in Indian uh, city, uh, Amerindian city. And, um, uh, and then we found this female and uh, we introduced them to each other. And they fell startlingly in love. It was quite That's a lucky fact. thing because sometimes, like when they had the, the panda, Ling Ling the panda, yeah. they brought her a mate <laughs> and she looked like, oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and he looked at her like, you are the ugliest panda bitch I have ever seen. <laughs> It's like, you know, you have to find a panda, and they, they're very particular, they're, you know, and pretty medicated, too. But well, they probably don't know they're pandas, do they? Yeah, they're, they're probably going, oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. There's something they that they're zookeepers, that's all they ever see. <laughs> yeah. so yeah. Where's your food? <laughs> exactly. Can but, I smell um, they just smelled each other and fell completely in love. And, oh. and so we, we have a webcam, which is permanently, which is what the internet is for, to watch, watch live um, shagging, and, and that's, what, uh, <laughs> that's what we do. Live what bear naked, shagging? Yeah, exactly. Talk um, to a naked could bear. Yeah. <laughs> so you can... 976 <laughs> Cub. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, and, and this book is, the whole proceeds are for your Bear Foundation now. You they are indeed. We founded, we does, founded this charity yeah. to, to help keep these little darlings alive. And, yes. um, and it's working very well. I, 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 well. Did you take to the jungle, uh, to the Manor Bourne? Absolutely. Can't, can't you see it in me? Can't you see well, it in me? Well, there's a couple of pictures in the book. Let's have a look oh, at God. one of them. There. Yeah, you now, see? That, is, <laughs> that is totally unconvincing, Fred. Well, it really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at the next one, please. <laughs> now, now, this is more like... Now, <laughs> Robin, Robin, if you didn't know who Stephen was and you, somebody said to you, what nationality is that man there? You'd say English, wouldn't you? No, New Zealand. <laughs> no, New Zealand. <laughs> you see? No, New yeah. Zealand. It's got right there. Looks, you know, he's out there. No worries. Come on, eh? Uh, Come I'm on, wild straight animal. out. I'm a wild animal. And, and, you know, you've done these nature things. Oh, and, yeah. A pipe is... A pipe is... It's, it's, it's not just a, a quiet, contemplative moment after breakfast when you, you know... You, rub your flake and you have a smoke, but it's also, it keeps the mosquitoes away. And, uh, and you get respected by the but... local people. So really nice. <laughs> and when you smoke a local leaf, when you have the local leaf, the, the herbal life rep comes to help you, <laughs> and you smoke, and you can see the bear any time of the day. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> That's why, you know? People said, how did you build Machu Picchu? I said, take a cocoa leaf, you got a running star. <laughs> 
know, it's quick that way. You know, a lot of people don't know that you come to Peru. They have, they do. You have tea. You do drink coca though. It's quite legal to drink it as a tea. As a tea and as a really, well, yeah. How are you? I've been awake now for four days. <laughs> it, really, it really doesn't do that to you, Michael. And no, I would, Michael. Yeah, yeah. Not at all. Oh, Michael, and if you want some, we have in the back. <laughs> and, and, and if there are any young people watching, for God's Just sake, say don't no to tea. go into <laughs> improvised comedy, whatever. You see the result. Just see, it's, the result. Uh, just, see how ugly yeah. it can get. I've unleashed, unleashed a beast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Too late now, so. indeed. Yeah. All right, so uh, now, mm. you're now directing mm. your first movie, aren't you? Am, you yes. another, yet another string to your book. Yeah, it's very are exciting. You, is this kind of a, a kind of frantic chase to do as many things as you possibly can before... You'll cross to the further shore. <laughs> for, for I die of death. Yeah. Yes. It is, to be perfectly honest, it absolutely is. I, I, I do, some people are unaware of death. I'm constantly aware of death, or at least constantly aware of a moment uh, just before death when I say to myself, well, bugger, why didn't I do that? Why did I say no? To, what, to whatever it is. I mean, there's a famous Arnold Baxter remark, in this life you should try everything except incest and country dancing. Um, <laughs> um, well, in some places say, in Arkansas you can have both. Yes. <laughs> yes. No doubt about it. No doubt about Get off it. me, Paul, no. you're crushing my smoke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's, that's, Back to directing. Yeah, on that issue, yeah. exactly. Um, Back to film. Yeah, I just I think of incest. You, know, you get the opportunity and, and, um, and embrace it, I say. Uh, You're it's doing a, an adaptation of Vile Bodies. Of Vile Bodies yeah. by Edwin Moore, yes. It's called Bright Young Things. It's, uh, 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 which Originally it was called that way. It was it? A, a war's original idea for a title, but it rapidly became a, a sort of journalistic cliche, rather like It Girl or something. It suddenly became the phrase everyone used, and I think he felt it was a bit beneath his dignity to call a, a literary novel uh, uh, a Bright Young Things, so he changed it to Vile Bodies. And uh, I think Bright Young Things is better. It is a, a generation of high living, fast living, cocaine snorting, uh, cocktail sucking. Um, dancing, you know, to incredibly fast music. It is very exciting to do a, a film which, although it's a, if you want to call it a literary adaptation, which I don't, it is also, it's fast and extraordinary, you know, the pace of it, mostly when people do period films, they tend to slow everything down as if people lived at a much slower pace. Yes. And this is the generation yes. that invented everything we think of as modern. It is, what the story centres around is, is photojournalism, what we would now call paparazzi, um, gossip columnists, fame, uh, sp Fast cars, telephones, incredibly important. Um, uh, War was very proud of the fact it was the first novel in which people used the telephone. You see, these parents, the parents' generation used the telephone to say, I'll have some of that fish, um, you know, from their fishmonger, and then they put the phone down. But these people were lying on the bed, you know, proposing to each other and so on. And it was shocking, much in the way to some, you know, the way young people text now is shocking. So, uh, and drugs, and drink, and crashing and burning, and nightclubbing in particular, were all invented in this insane decade. Uh, and it was done, like all pioneers do, it was done with more zest, more insanity, more suicidal um, tendencies, and, above all, with more style, I suspect, yes. than it is now. Well, the style um, clip is... Though we will only be able to judge that in the future. I dare see people saying, oh, UK garage two-step hip-hop, what a stylish era that was. <laughs> and it's highly possible they will. <laughs> I don't think so. No, oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> think, who are we to say? <laughs> Is there a part for Mr. Williams in your... Well, I, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've cast a, a statutory American... <laughs> no, no. Uh, Dan Aykroyd, um, uh, who, yeah. who's uh, much in your field, uh, is playing a character loosely based on, on Lord Beaverbrook. And, of course, Dan Aykroyd is Canadian, Canadian so it's rather yes. appropriate. Yes. Um, but if, uh, if he falls out for some reason or asks for too much money, I will be the first, <laughs> the first to ask, ask Robin yeah. if he knows anybody. Come work for scale, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But... Uh, oh, I enjoy, enjoy the business of directing, though. I mean, it's a daunting prospect, isn't it? It's, I mean, you're you are the field marshal. I mean, you're yes. not just one of the troops. At the moment, we're in pre-production. We start actual uh, principal photography. It's grandly known in about three weeks. Uh, it's, it's the fact that every day I, I, I get up at about six to, to, to get to my production office and nice and early and I, I get very sort of, you know, hyper and excited and write down notes about things and then people start sort of coming in by seven. Everyone's mad keen and fantastically talented um, design departments and production departments and everything. And, and I get shown things all the time. Here are seven cigarette cases. Which one for this character? Which one for that character? Here are cigarette holders. Here are shooting sticks. And then suddenly, I, well, I, I'm, my mind is reeling about which cigarette case was going to, which character. Suddenly someone comes in and talks about music. How much, you know, do you want, the li you want a live band in this scene? How many in the orchestra? And so on. Suddenly your whole life is revolving around the music in the film. And then suddenly the cameraman and the operator will come in and they'll start talking about shots. And then you're driven off to a recce to look at a location. And So it, every day is divided into these extraordinarily intense slices. And uh, I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, the, uh, I, just, um, I just get... I, 
desperate when uh, I hear about um, some really good film like yours that's open and there's a good director out there because you go, like, I don't want anybody to be... I want every film that is made from now for the next year to be appalling. <laughs> I mean, so dreadful <laughs> that mine yeah. might be watchable. But yes. I keep hearing about these wonderful films and I, it's just slightly despairing. But I'm looking forward enormously oh, to the... Uh, when will that be out, next year sometime? Yes, next yeah. year, yes. Well, you've yes. got two films out. You've got Insomnia out as well. You're a whore. Yeah. I am. So yeah. Really, I'll yeah. swing you your made... handbag on any street. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Look, well, quickly, we'll go to the opening of an envelope. Yeah, yeah there's Insomnia, one hour photo, and the sequel to Insomnia, Incontinence, which is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just when you thought it was safe. No, you said, you, said um, you mentioned in passing. Uh, uh, goodwill humping and 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 is there there is oh every time it, it, I thought there would never be a, you, you know, know they, the reference was the fact that every hit film that's made there's a porn there's a porn yeah, equivalent that plays on oh, the oh yeah title. shaving Ryan's private that's the one I was going to mention I love that one. Oh, oh, they had, I thought when they made Crouching Tiger they could never make yeah. a porno yeah. version yeah. of that like Hung Fu no yeah. they, <laughs> but they actually made Crotchless Tiger something's dragon oh. <laughs> It's like you went, oh, uh, no, every movie, every movie. And Romancing the Bone. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> they have all of them. It's Every movie oh. comes out, they make a porn version of it, which uh, is great, too. Uh. They never make a classical porno movie, though, which is, so that's the way you like it. You know? <laughs> you know, really hardcore Shakespearean actors going, I will part you like the Red Sea, Elizabeth. <laughs> Through the cock does crow, you shall know my name. <laughs> Be not knowing but this, Uncle Feasty, not doing and pulling that gentle thing and calling my wand and glaze you like a Danish. Do you not know me? <laughs> Like a baby. <laughs> Spring up and wiener! <laughs> Run upon thee, dead cock on all thy feet! Till the major doth become mine, I have you not known! <laughs> Speak to me and run, gentle moose, not call your name. <laughs> Go, O oh, pinch faced one, O oh, giant rat, and call me not. Till Tony Blair doth say the word, and George be not going into the bush, we shall. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what a good Jimmy, Jimmy. Oh. oh, dear me. Classical porn. <laughs> classical porn. Yeah, it sounds like a CD, <sighs> classical porn. Well, oh, okay. <laughs> it's been fun. It's been terrific. Was, yeah. Oh, well, we're back. <laughs> back on Once again. Back on planet. I do know. It's nice to be the quiet one. Right, yeah. <laughs> it must be a yeah. long time since you've been the quiet one in oh, any kind yes. of... Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm normally a man of few words, as you know. And oh, I'm sure. A, but uh, to this Mr Logaria here, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Please help the Logaria <laughs> tell us on. Logaria, go away. Oh, I am Sam. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. It's terrific. I mean, good God. Good. How many are born? Of your, I mean, it is. It's a, a gene pool. Of your, you have, yeah. you have children. When the gene pool's fantastic. a jacuzzi, this is what you get. Yeah. <laughs> you have children. Yes, you have spawn. It's, it's, yes. There must and be a Robin Land somewhere where there are more of you, where you can, you know. There's others who yeah. speak this yes. language. <laughs> <laughs> There's others who shuffle oh, to the beat of your drama. It is fantastic. God bless. The extraordinary thing is, I, I, um, I've followed you enough to know that. It's so fast that people assume it must be learnt, or that, yes. oh, I said this before at a dinner party, so I'm going to say it again, yes. but I swear to you, these things come out just... Yeah. It is a, it's, it's a kind of work of art. what he's doing. And like he... a lot of art, it is deeply disturbing and often slightly... <laughs> 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 but it is yeah. also fantastic. I Dear Mrs so. Picasso, Pablo <laughs> still won't play with the others. <laughs> well, actually... <laughs> There's a line called plays, actually, you know, which... When he was asked how he constructed a picture, he said, I take a line for a walk. That's, that's exactly wonderful. what you do, isn't it? Yeah, you're Just right. Yeah. Take a line for I a walk. Take a joke for a walk, yeah. abuse it, and bring it yeah. home. <laughs> <laughs> it's like jazz, isn't it? It's riffing. You call oh, it yeah, riffing. but yeah. Like, he does the same thing. He does exactly the same thing. Yeah, you riff off. Just a just a tonight. Just 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 he wasn't able to get a word no. in. No, he did. He did. He did. He got it in. But anyway, so back to this then. So all the proceeds for your book go to that that cause, and we look forward to good news. Yes, in the future? absolutely. Well, you, may you make a, a, an announcement to, uh, to the effect that there have been issues that has been arranged? Uh, we will. Uh, we will. You'll be able to see the birth and the the bloody membranous sack on on the internet if you choose to look at it. <laughs> Excellent. www.bear-rescue.tv. Yes. Dot slash um, membranous sack. Actually, I just wanted to say, I just heard this the other day. It's Go a on. rather sweet story. It's not funny, but it's rather sweet. You know, there is this domain, as they're called, dot TV, which we have on bearrescue.tv. It's it's from the island of Tuvalu, which is a tiny little island. 
tiny, why did I say tiny like that? But it's a tiny little island. Tiny, yeah, it's tiny, tiny word. Tiny word. That's right, it's a tiny little <laughs> island. One of the, one of the, some near the Cook Islands, isn't it? And, and uh, it was dirt poor like some of the other, you know, just sort of blowing, you know, sort of fertiliser sacks and horrible signs of modern man having come and raped it of its minerals and its uh, fruits and then just buggered off again, leaving a rather disgruntled people. But now it has hospitals and roads and libraries and it's shining with wealth because just through this ludicrous accident that its domain uh, uh, initials are TV. And, and all media all around the world have paid top dollar, as they say, to have so they can have, you know, if you wanted to, you could, it could be www.parkinson.tv. You could, you could buy it and the money would go because they very cunningly didn't sell it to some shyster who had spotted it before they them. Kept they it kept it as their own domain. And so oh, that's it, it's really cute. That's they make the weird. money out of it. And so the near, nearby islands of Rumbalumba or whatever are really thinking, you know, why did God... Why can't we call it Island Com? Yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> Our <laughs> island is www. <laughs> we had www long time before that with the island of the stuttering people, people, people. <laughs> and the island of com and the island of www. Come and give me a baby. Dot. What the island? The island of dot. <laughs> Every time you use a dot, you can pay us money. <laughs> and a dot, you have a way at www. Com. We take com. <laughs> Slash. <laughs> What's the name? At. <laughs> The island of at. Where are you? At. <laughs> at com. Thank you. I love you too. <laughs> it was, it, you remind me of the comic version. There was, there was a famous, uh, there was a famous f uh, Don at Cambridge who, who was said to know everything. And, and people get really pissed off because there was no subject they could raise without which he couldn't join in. And, and, and he had thought, no, no. But you're in a comic version. So, so they, they, they got together one, one evening this lot, and, and when he was sort of sitting near them, they said, uh, well, that's astonishing news from the Danish Football League, isn't it? And he leaned forward and said, yes, who would have believed that Elsinore would have been beaten by Copenhagen United like that? Quite extraordinary, isn't it? But, of course, they'd just done the transfer, and he knew everything about the Danish Football League, so they just, as it were, ripped off every idea and gave it away. And I dare say, if we could have a competition, if someone in the audience could shout out a subject on which Robin could not discourse until you, you, you were either wet yourself or, or had a baby <laughs> or, or vomited with laughter. Uh, can you think of one? Well, we've done that. There is one, is there? Producer's going, yeah, how much God. money have we raised? <laughs> <laughs> there is a, the Logaria yeah, Foundation. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and here's that fish. Yes, <laughs> <that's there. laughs> oh, yeah. a good boy, good boy. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen Fry, yeah. thank you very uh, much indeed. Thank Stephen you Fry. very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to my guests, Stephen Fry and Robin Williams.